Number seven, define the following and give an example of each. And then we have a dipole dipole attraction. Okay. So first things first is that whenever you have a molecule that exhibits dipole dipole attraction, there's only one specific class of molecules that can even have this force. And you must be, or the molecule must be a polar molecule. Now, a polar molecule is, remember, a asymmetrical, asymmetrical molecule. So these are just like little uh, tips to help you figure out what is a polar molecule. A polar molecule is always going to be asymmetrical. And we'll give an example as we get further down into this question. So you got to be polar in order to have a dipole-dipole attraction. What a dipole-dipole attraction is, so we're going to define it, is basically it's a electrostatic force or an electrostatic attraction. Now, when we're talking about electrostatic, this is just talking about charges. So these are kind of like permanent charges now. Keep in mind that when we talked about dipole, di uh, not dipole, dispersion forces, those were temporary. But now we're moving up into the next level. Dipole-dipole is about permanent charges that are seen in polar molecules. Specifically, you're going to see that electrostatic attraction between the negative end of a polar molecule, whatever that polar molecule is, polar molecule, with... The positive end, remember, opposites attract. So two negatives will not get together, two positives will not get together. It's all about that negative and the positive that love to hook up together. So this is the electrostatic attraction between the negative end of a polar molecule with the positive end of another polar molecule. But the key here is that they both have to be polar. Now, here is a depiction of a general form of what's going on in a dipole-dipole attraction. But let's put molecules in it. Now, here is molecule number one, and here is molecule number two. Now, let's pretend that we have HCl. So maybe I'll put, just to color code all this, I'll put the red for the H, I'll put the Cl for the blue, and Cl has six lone electrons here. And it's got a bond. Now, HCl is classified as a polar molecule because if I split this down the middle, I have H on one end and I have Cl on the other. Those are two different atoms. So that would be asymmetrical. And asymmetrical always goes with polar. So let me just bring this up. Okay. Now... Let's do another HCl, because these attractions are not within one molecule of itself. The dipole-dipole attraction has to be one molecule with another molecule. So maybe I'll draw the same one. I have H, red, and Cl, which is blue. It's got the um, six electrons, and I have the bond. Now, between, and maybe I'll just put this in the middle here, because now we know that both of these, I mean, they're the same compound, but they're polar because they're asymmetrical. Now we just have to find out, well, which one is the positive end and which one is the negative end? This has to do with electronegativity. Remember, if I draw my little periodic table over here, what a beautiful periodic table, and I define the electronegativities... Remember, electronegativity is the attractiveness to gain an electron. As you go from left to right on the periodic table, that electronegativity will increase. And since hydrogen's over here and chlorine's over here somewhere, chlorine will have a higher electronegativity. It will want to gain the electron. That means that in this bond, if I strip that bond away and I put the two electrons, 
those electrons are being pulled by chlorine. Those electrons in that bond are more towards chlorine. Chlorine is greedy. And because of that, chlorine gets this funky little S. That means partial. It's the dipole. So dipole always has this like little sign here. So this would be partial negative because chlorine is greedy and takes those electrons. And that leaves hydrogen barely having anything at all. So that's partial positive. This is what it means by the negative end and the positive end. The negative end of the one molecule will want to make that force, that attraction, to the positive end of the next one. If I strip this bond away and I put those electrons, remember, it always goes to the more electronegative element. Hydrogen, once again, is always going to be the partial positive, and the chlorine will be partial negative. And this attraction of positive goes with, maybe I'll do this in green, of the negative goes with the positive, that's the dipole force. That's this right here. So this is the dipole-dipole attraction. Dipole-dipole attraction. It's the attraction between the two molecules at the different charged ends. So this would be like H, and this will be Cl. H, Cl. And you could look at it in a different way if they were arranged differently. Because remember, these molecules are, you know, kind of uh, changing, right? Depending on if they're a liquid or a solid or a gas. But HCl, it's in liquid form. When you use HCl in your lab, it's always going to be in aqueous, right? So HCl can be seen as a liquid. The H now is down here and the chlorine up top here. So they can, you know, they can change their orientation, but it's the same exact thing. Whoop, hold on. Christina, did anybody catch that? This has to be the positive end, and this is the negative. And now positives hook up with negatives. And that's basically what's going on here. That's a dipole-dipole attraction. So I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel, and I look forward to helping you with more questions. And I'll talk to you then. Okay, have an awesome day. Bye-bye.